thank you very much for introducing me and thank you very much to all the audience that is connected now with us and we almost reached the 13 hours since our live streaming has begun and i'm very happy to introduce you our next uh, speaker which is from chile from santiago de chile and it's uh, eric ciravegna hi hi eric how nice are you fine fine you fine thanks how are you thanks. in chile is everything thank good thank you very much for for the invitation i'm so glad to be here Super. me too <laughs> really it's really a pleasure to have you this conversation with eric and i had the chance to meet eric uh, many years ago a few uh, not so much a few years ago <laughs> because our offices were one in front of the other in the same department and then five years ago he moved to to chile to santiago del chile and then and now he lives there and works there and let me introduce you a little bit to our audience. He is a design professor at uh, Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile. And he is a communicator designer and an academic and a consultant by profession and a teacher and a trainer, I have to say, by vocation totally. <laughs> and regarding teaching and researching, he developed on one side uh, the good packaging, which is a, a laboratory and an observatory on the ethical implications of packaging design and its uh, responsibility and impacts on people. That is always something that we have to care about. And on the other side, he also developed the design drama, which is a methodology to foster creativity and the integration of people and in the training and projectile processes. So thank you again for being here. I'm very happy to have the co this conversation with you. And maybe we can start uh, with the keyword you proposed when we contacted you, which is uh, apapacha. And can you explain us what is the meaning of this term and where does it come from? Well, um, it, it's a word that I love very much. Uh, I confess that I, I knew it, I, I learned it here in, in South America, and I, I'm literally in love with this word. Um, somebody said that apapachar is one of the most beautiful words in Spanish. And one of the words also that Spanish was gifted from the indigenous languages of Latin America. Um, its, its origin comes from Nahuatl, a native language of Central America that is over a thousand years old. And seemingly there is no exact translation in English for that. Well, apapachar is a verb and it is especially common in Mexico and Colombia, but it's a term uh, used also in many other countries in Latin America. Here in Chile, for example, where I heard it for the first time and where I learned its, its meaning. Mm. Well, the meaning of apapachar in, in the most usual sense, let's say in a superficial sense, is, is to embrace, to, to cuddle. But in a deeper sense, and even in a spiritual sense, it means to caress with the soul. It's a very powerful metaphor, I think, and I find it a very beautiful and, and, and poetic word. It is essentially a show of affection, from, but from the most intimate part of our being, which goes beyond physical contact. Through a hug, a kiss, or a caress, our soul is, is undressing in front of another uh, to, to offer affection or a very intimate support, but in a psychological, a spiritual sense, not from an erotic or material point of view. Apapachar means giving comfort when, when a loved one is in grief, giving affection to, to someone who is having a very bad time. It refers to something that can have a a therapeutic and, and healing power for people. Um, I don't know if you if you know the work of the I Italian singer Franco Battiato. Uh, this concept of a papa char reminds me very much his song La Cura, the care in English, which is considered one of the best Italian love songs. But in reality, in it, in it, it's in the deepest spiritual sense. So it, it refers to love in, in, in a highest form, not a romantic love. So in this song, the, the singer, the lyrical self, speaks to a person 
that is not necessarily a lover, it's someone he cares very much and to whom he promises to dedicate his life. He promises to protect her or him from the obstacles of life, from injustices, from fears, from falls, from obsessions. He told her so fears of hypochondria, upsets that she or he could encounter on the way. So it's not merely a love song, it's more profound and spiritual. It's literally a care song. Well, and in this sense, what I love of the verb apapachar is that it expresses not only an action, it's, it's an attitude towards life and towards the others. It's a caring attitude. It refers finally to a vision of life, which with, with a focus on, on human relationships, on, on affection, and more in general, on the well-being of people. This is a vision of life, this is a model of life, that is indeed the lifestyle promoted by many indigenous cultures of America. And I am sure, and that's why I love this word, that we may learn so much from them in their vision of the world. Totally, totally. Really, you touch it super interesting points. I mean, taking care, embracing, really is uh, such a, I have to say, a poetic word, the one you chose. Totally. Really in, this, in this moment where I think in this emergency, we need some poetry in our lives, some really positive words. Absolutely. But in the end, you were referring to the, the lifestyle, uh, this, this lifestyle coming from the indigenous culture of yeah. America. And such lifestyle you refer to, do you think it could be a model for the post-pandemic world in which we should be living next? Yeah, uh, totally. Um, there is another expression that I learned here in, in Latin America that I loved very much also. The expression is el buen vivir, <laughs> that means the good living. Uh, it is part of the culture of many indigenous peoples in Central and South America. Um, it is even included in the constitutions of countries like Ecuador and Bolivia. Well, this expression addresses several concepts linked to the quality of life from, from a social, environmental perspective, but also from a human one. From a human one. However, this expression does not refer to an abstract concept or, or a utopia. It refers to a tradition, but a tradition that is lived, that is experienced, and daily shared also through practices of equality, community coexistence, reciprocity, and relationships in harmony with others and with the, with the Pachamama, that is the, the Mother Earth. I know that, well, I know that talking about Pachamama and all this spiritual thing may sound a little bit naive or nostalgic, probably a little bit I am. But in reality, I do not intend the idolizing the pre-Columbian cultures. I just want to, to show you what we may learn from them, from the, the worldview and, and the values that these peoples can bring us today such difficult moments, such difficult situation we, we, we are facing globally all around the world. Especially in times beyond pandemic, especially in times where materialism, individualism prevail above all with little or no respect for the others or for the environment. So what we probably have to question is the concept that we have uh, the so-called developed peoples, developed countries. So we have to question the, qu the concept of humanity. So we have to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be human nowadays? It, and in relation to that, in relation to, to this idea of humanity, uh, I remember a, a phrase of or a poetess that I love, that is, that is Gabriela Mistral, she, she was a Chilean poetess, a diplomat, and an educator, a, a humanist. And um, she was the, the first Latin America woman to receive a Nobel Prize in literature. Wow, such a 
Yeah, strong uh, woman, important woman in the history. Yeah, an, an, an important figure, an important figure in, in the Chilean history, but also in the Latin American history and in the, in the history of literature. Many, many, many people know Pablo Neruda, I mean, around the world and in Italy, for example, we celebrate Pablo Neruda's work, but we would have to celebrate the Gabriela Mistral work. We, we, we have to, um, we would have to, to, to teach the work of Gabriela Mistral in the schools. But well, back to, to, to that phrase, um, in Santiago de Chile, here uh, in the city center, very close uh, to where I, I live, there is a, a cultural center dedicated to Gabriela Mistral, the GAM, it's called GAM, Gabriela, Gabriela Mistral. And on the main wall of this cultural center, you may read a phrase that says, la humanidad es todavía algo que hay que humanizar. That means that humanity is still something that we need to humanize. And that, that's what, what I, I was saying about the idea of humanity. So we have to question that word. We have to rethink about the meaning of what does it mean to be human? Absolutely. And I also appreciate a lot that you are giving uh, a lot of information about Chilean culture. And it's really something that amazed me today, passing from one conversation to another seeing the culture, knowing new cultures that we weren't aware of. I mean, wasn't something I, I was knowing before. It's really one of the most interesting thing here. And thank you very much for sharing that and so focusing part of your conversation on that, really. It, it, it's, it's a pleasure because I love very much this country. This it's country... completely evident. I mean, <laughs> we, I can see that you really feel comfortable there and you really appreciate all the history you learned in these five years. <laughs> Great. <laughs> and if we go back a little bit to, to yeah. the word you chose, Zapapachar, uh, why did you chose this term exactly for this conversation? I mean, do you have any other meaning that you would mm. like to, to give us to explain um, it better? Yeah. Well, Apapachar, um, I, I propose this, this word for, for, as a keyword for, for uh, post-pandemic design because after this large lockdown, and well, we in Chile, we are still in, in a lockdown, so I can, I can give my example also. Yeah, sure. But after the lockdown, we, we all need more than ever special care and emotional support. People will need to heal from, from all the pain and all the anxiety they have suffered to, to heal from, from the physical and emotional isolation they, they had to face, the separation from their families, um, friends, partners, but also they, they will have to recover from the consequences of all the difficult situations they passed through, the loss of a loved one in hospital for the COVID-19 without the possibility of saying goodbye for the problem of the diffusion of the pandemic, um, or for example, not making it financially for, for, for being fired from work. So not reaching the end of the month for, for not having the money, the, the, the resources to, to literally survive. Sure. Well, more in general, the, the uncertainty. In many cases, people have literally experienced even the loss of meaning and, and the, the loss of references in, in, in life. So in this scenario, I am convinced that design should play the important role of supporting people's healing processes, both physically and emotionally, focusing on two crucial aspects. Uh, you mentioned uh, them before, that's the, the curing of people and the caring especially of people. They are quite similar, but they, they refer to different, different things. Hmm? During the pandemic, we have been witnessing the, the important contribution of design to, to the development of solutions, for, for example, for the cure and the healthcare of people. 
I, I, I always mention the, the example of the hacking of the decathlon and snorkel masks. Also here in Chile, a colleague of mine of the school, Ivan Caro, uh, worked on the idea of hacking the, the vet masks to transform them into respirators. Or, well, also the contributions um, that design gave to the to the health system, um, designing, offering solutions of instruments or services for the medical staff, the, the, the shields or other tools for for um, for the curing of people in the hospitals during the, the emergency. Besides, um, many of us have been also able have been also able to stay safe and, and, and secure at home during quarantine. And, and that's thanks to the digital technologies and the connecting devices, which allowed us to work remotely, to, to also to be this here number, in this moment, here today, <laughs> in this moment uh, having this interchange, um, but also to buy and receive at home orders from supermarkets or other stores, stay in contact with our loved ones and even virtually party together, having yeah. party. <laughs> it happened. Virtual party, it happened. <laughs> For instance, last Saturday, uh, it was my birthday. Uh, and, happy and, birthday, uh, so. <laughs> a little you. bit late, but. <laughs> no, thank, you. thank you very much. And, and, but, well, I was alone. And, okay, I live alone here and I'm isolated. I've been isolated for three months now and because that it here it's still tough here in Santiago but yeah, I had it, I had the chance to be accompanied and and emotionally contained by my family and friends it was really quite paradoxical because I was more isolated than ever but I was more accompanied more than ever, more than yeah. ever. Yes. Through um, messages and, and videos and gifts that I received at home. Um, uh, I also received a, a, a party box to, 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 to organize. It would my, have never happened if party. you were in presence. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So in this sense, I, I say that design can be a, a, a tool um, during the pandemic and, and after the pandemic a tool to support the, the physical cure of people, but also their caring, their emotional containment. And, 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 and this role of, um, of design as an almost therapeutic tool will be, will be even more important in the post-pandemic, considering that we'll need to, to heal, we need to repair our broken relationships. We have to reestablish meaningful connections with the others and reconnect with society and we with the environment because we are lost totally lost yeah i mean it's really a tough period you touched really some super uh, contemporary stuff i have to say i also had the experience to have my birthday alone Mm. Luckily, I have my partner here, but all my friends and my family weren't with me. So it was a strange birthday, as you said. But metaphorically, I was more connected in this period than in many others. So, you know, you live in this dichotomy of uh, I'm alone, I'm isolated. I cannot go out as it was in Italy before, as you are now experiencing in Chile. And so same was uh, before here in Italy. So you really touched some, some really contemporary points. And anything to add about the, the, the meaning that uh, Apapachar has? I mean, uh, while we were um, discussing before our conversation together, probably we touched also some other points that were quite interesting, as I remember good. Yeah. Well, um, it's in relation to the social environmental crisis that we are facing now. Um, the point is that the coronavirus pandemic has certainly caused um, a global health crisis. But at the same time, it has only increased the social and environmental crisis that we have been facing in the recent decades, and especially last year. Um, here in Chile, for example, um, the social outbreaks that we have witnessed here 
um, in Santiago and, and, and all, but also in, in other countries in, in, in all Latin America, in, in Ecuador. Uh, I was in Ecuador when, when all happened, yeah. uh, also in Ecuador and then in Chile. Uh, and, but in, in other parts of the world also, in, in Hong Kong, in Egypt, um, Lebanon, Catalonia, UK, all, in all the parts of the world, uh, all these protests together with the Friday for Future marches and, and but all the protests are demanding action towards political freedom, economic equality, culture and social rights and, and, and climate justice. So this, this global phenomenon truly tells us that humanity has lost that connection we mentioned before, but on any level, it, it's personal, social, environmental level. The, the protests and the marches have partly stopped for the pandemic, but they will be back at the end of the lockdown. So we have to be prepared for another period of breakdown and uncertainty. Of and course. We won't have a return to normality. Neither a new normality. I think that we, we, we should work to build new scenarios, but taking into account that the idea of normality was, was the problem. So the, the contemporary crisis challenges us as designers to, to stop First, to stop overproducing things and instead favor meaningful relationships, reinforce our role of, as caretakers of people, along with the protection and survival, survival of the planet. Design must strongly reaffirm its role in sustaining the quality of life. Th th that's, I think, the main point in, in all the, the possible interpretations. Um, and surely, I think that this metaphor of a papa char, that this idea to caressing with the soul, this idea of caring for people, but for any living creatures in the planet, I think that will take more and more sense and importance. Totally, really. Also, this final thing you were saying, this new sort of role for designers is really, I think you touched uh, an important point because, you know, designers as always have been seen as uh, problem solvers, mediator, or some other roles like this. And the role of caretaker and the role of uh, pushing some changes in the mind of people and in the mind of governments, maybe is really something that we have to face after this uh, emergency. As you said, to, to establish not a normality, but a new habit, a new today from now on. That's really something I think we need to, to reflect on. And so connecting to these two designers and their role, mm -hmm. do you have any recommendations for students or young designers uh, for this period and for the future mm -hmm. that we will have mm -hmm. to face? Well, um, <laughs> I know it's a tough question. <laughs> di di difficult, but, but important, I think really <laughs> relevant. Um, well, as a, as a professor, besides the, the fundamentals of our discipline, the theory and the project methodology, etc. What I try to teach to my students usually first is not to, fa to fear failure. Oh. And what's that? That's practicing self compassion. And on the other hand, secondly, to improve their empathy, that is, practice compassion to the others. Yeah. So, empathy above all. Above all can be a powerful tool. And definitely it is key when we create solutions to solve people's problems. If we want to design for a better world and if we want to improve the quality, the quality of life. Um, Tim Brown, for example, in, in his book, uh, Change by Design, describes empathy as the mental, mental habit that, that moves us beyond thinking of people as laboratory rats or standard deviations because that was the, pr the problem or some of the problems that, that had user-centered design at the beginning. But if we, if we learn how to empathize with the recipients of our project, means it, it implies, means that we may understand and meet their needs, take care of them, and even, thinks, and even think in terms of what they may need to make their life much easier and significant. 
So in this sense, I think that empathic design is probably the approach that better exemplifies the metaphor of apapachar within the totally. design processi processes. However, empathy is not only a tool for the project, a way to take care of our users. Empathy is also what I call a life tool, one of the soft tool uh, for the designers themselves. So empathy may support us in the establishing a deep and meaningful connection with the others, both at work and in everyday living. So wh what I think is that after all, if we want to be better professionals, we have first to be better humans and vice versa. And in a certain way, um, empathy could help us improving that good living, el buen vivir, that, that I mentioned before, that is at the basis of the indigenous cultures, which encourage people, people's wellness, social welfare, and, and the quality of life in harmony with the planet. Yeah, yeah, true. I mean, I completely agree with what you say because it's also some topics that I'm touching with my research as I work with uh, people with dementia and environments yeah. for them and totally taking care and be empathic with them is absolutely a way to get, how to say, in tune with these people. I mean, you don't have to judge, you don't have to cure, you don't have to, to I mean, to, to change their behavior, but you have to understand it. That's the key to, to yes. go through that. Absolutely. And really, I, I really think that's, uh, that's, uh, that's the point. That's, uh, I, I totally agree with that and uh, great that you touched it. And any other recommendation that comes to your mind or any other thought for, for the um, younger that, uh, just well, to conclude um, our last yeah, three minutes. Yeah, yeah. To, to conclude the, 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 these last minutes. Well, um, I strongly believe that the, the post-pandemic will demand us to adopt a profound change in our current models. I mean, the production models, the, the consumption models, models that have already proven to be unsustainable, not only for future generations, but also for us. The planet think it, then can't take it anymore. So the contemporary crisis Highlight the ex highlighted the extreme fragility of human being. So it is inevitable that we will have to choose a radical change in the way we live, a shift in our worldview, um, find a, a new harmony with the, with the other, with the others and the, the environment. So what I think that we have to do is to think um, to, um, to return to the essential, to what really matters, it's a back to basics, yeah. I, I should say. Mm -hmm. So to, to conclude, to, to give some other values that I believe that are that, that may be key for the post pandemic is, for, for example, simplicity, um, naturalness, honesty. They, they are values that, that they must be privileged over the artificial, the deceptive, in such perspective, I think that authenticity and transparency must be promoted as founding values of the project. And, and this, according to what I, um, I, 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 I always promoted also in my courses, uh, according to an ethical approach to design, that, that finally means taking into account our impacts and our responsibilities towards other humans and more in general, towards all the other living beings, towards the planet life. Yeah, true. I think that this period uh, somehow made us more aware, I think, of those important and fundamental things, or at least this is what I hope. This is what I, every time I hope and I try to discuss with the students, as you said, should be really that we have to rethink which is the what we call normality at the same exactly. time that we have to think what are the basic things, the essential things in our life. Probably we focused on things that were not so important, not so fundamental before. And maybe this, this period in which uh, I have to say that I felt fragile, but I felt fragile and I've never felt fragile before. I always felt like 
I should feel fragile to go near to the people I'm dealing with. But this time I felt also fragile as the other. And this makes me really, as you said, as you said before, think about and rethink about the role and what we do. So thank you very much, Eric, for touching this amazing point. The, the word you chose is really one of the most uh, interesting as for now, in for my opinion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank it was really a pleasure to have in, in this conversation with you. Oh, really. Thank you very much. Also for me, really, it was a pleasure to see you again after some years. And exactly. very it much. A surprise. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, I have to say goodbye to you.